what happens when SVS makes a self-powered DSP corrected speaker? A lot. Let's pull up a ball. This one's ribbed for my pleasure. Um, and look at an SVS Prime Wireless. <sighs> Hi. Um, five and a quarter. Thick surround. Thick, heavy surround. Uh, SVS standard tweeter with a little ring in there. It's very cute. Um, my biggest complaint is going to be about these speakers is the looks. It's not terrible. I love the finish. It comes in black or white. I would suggest gloves to handle it because I moved them here and I rearranged them and I'm out here like scrubbing down this high, insane high gloss finish. Um, the looks I would be concerned about is just the fascia here. If you have the covers off, the covers are, hold on, I'm gonna try to do this without bouncing off a ball. The cover does that. And I like the shape of the cover. You got like this like slightly slight pyramid. It continues the edge shape here into this and it cleans it up a bit. The problem is when you take it off, you get, first of all, not magnets. So you get four peg holes. Then you get the tweeter, which is held in with four screws. And then around that is four other screws to hold in the plate. Then the driver itself is six screws. So you get six plus four, that's 10 plus eight, it's 18. 18 fasteners or holes in the front of this speaker. And then for this particular side, which is the right-hand side, which is, a, it doesn't do the thing where you could swap. Um, you get a full screen, which I love, and six preset buttons underneath it so that you could program in like a radio on a car, like, oh, I want this volume on this input, etc., which is here. And then you got a source slash display switch so you get 18 fasteners a screen six more buttons two knobs it's a lot there is a fucking like edifier we'll put the switches and knobs on the side so to clean up the front a little bit sps is like nah man all of it all right in front um so i'm gonna cover it just a just a wee bit i'm touching the sides which means i'm gonna have to uh clean it off but anyway, sit here beautifully. Um, they're nearly a thousand dollars. They're nine hundred bucks, and my ball. And there's a lot of competition in the self-powered speaker arena, especially if you're looking towards a thousand dollars. I will list them out loud, but honestly, I can't remember them off the top of my head. But there's a cancel tux. You can get the Vanity T1 Encores. You can get. Uh, the, the big edifiers, you get the air pulse. Actually, no, the air pulse that were a thousand were not worth it. These, which are currently in line with a subwoofer, and I could disable that by unplugging it. Um, that's another quirk that I think I figured out. I try to use every speaker on its own without any assistance. Pop. And you got to remember who SVS is. If I say, hey, I got an SVS, it's not a microwave, it's not a new car, it's a fucking subwoofer. A whomping great one. And so SVS does sell speakers. They've been selling their Ultra speakers and Ultra Towers for a while now. We even had them on RMAF when we did the RMAF room. And they're good. The, the, the Ultra bookshelves are damn good. The Ultra Primes, I didn't really like them as much. They were half the price. I felt like they were half the performance which is not how that's usually scaled. Usually it's like 10% less performance. It was like, uh, it just went, uh. So to have these be the prime bookshelf kind of concerned me that they were just gonna take the prime bookshelves, which I didn't like, and not the ultras. The thing is, when you start DSP correcting even a lesser speaker with a smaller driver, you get miraculous things to happen. This is Andy McKee, and I'm not going to play too much music because you know, we got the copyright strike from Sony. And I'm not sure who owns Andy McKee, but it, it may not be me. So it's it's just like, ah, did it play music? Great. I will eventually switch to... I'm actually on a limited budget of audio right now since my NAS is in the shitter. And uh, I'm just playing off of an external hard drive. So... Sitting here... Well, sitting specifically here in 
what would be considered, I would say, a medium-sized living room if this was a room and not a corner of my basement delineated by curtains. Um, I'd say this would do just fine in here. As long as you're not trying to hammer them. Because here's the remote control, which is completely in the dark. I really put another light over, another light over here. It's a weird remote. You got your presets at the bottom. You get three buttons here, a play pause, which is specifically for your own Bluetooth mode. Maybe even for the eARC. We gotta talk about eARC. You got a mute button, which mutes and shows a little mute icon there, which is cute. You get a brightness selector, which is on bright, dim, or off for the display, because there is a display on one of the speakers. Super unique feature, by the way. Usually, like the only displays I've seen on speakers have been on like the backs of studio monitors. So the fact that they just let fuck it full display that shows volume and what input you're on, great. Um, you'll notice, and I'll stand up for this because it's important. There's a little little notch in the back for, for your finger. Boom, look where my thumb is located, right on the volume. And it's a big, beautiful rocker and you can hit down and you could hit up and it's great. That's exactly what needs to be there, congratulations. You have your four input switches on top, uh, HDMI, which is for eARC. So if you're using your TV as a streaming, you know, you're using your Amazon streaming, you're using your Netflix built into your TV, you you have your, your Xbox and shit plugged into the TV, make sure the eARC plug, which is usually port one, is free so that you can plug the HDMI from the TV into the speakers, because that means you will be able to use the TV's remote to control the speakers. It'll just be set to HDMI and then Everything that the TV is controlling, where it would normally use the internal speakers, will come out to this, and it'll use the eARC to control it. So you get HDMI, Bluetooth, optical, and line. That's it. Four inputs. It's not the worst. Uh, actually, there is... Where is it? The line is a 3.5 or RCA. So we have to turn this around and look at it. Oh, this one's on washers to get the height right, because the floor is all fucked up here. You notice what's not on this remote? power we've got mute we've got brightness we've got play pause we've got volume we've got switch inputs we've got presets there's no mute there's no there's no power there's no like off go to bed because there's no off go to bed it's these speakers just don't have it they don't want to go off and you've plugged them in and leave me alone i think they do that because if there was an off it wouldn't work with the arc so they're like, well, most speakers aren't drawing much if they're not playing. They're all using class D amplification. So they're super efficient. They'll probably sit here using two watts at most. Okay, we're gonna sit down. We're gonna look at the we'll look at the back of the passive one. It's one plug and a port shooting out the back. You like my um Zeos? Link the wall panel stuff that you just installed today. It's literally stuck on with the extreme butyl blue uh, white tack. You just I gotta dust all the cat hair off. Let's turn this around. And again, I literally have it on top of washers to level it because I'm obsessive, compulsive. It had to be, it had to be the right height. And the, the speaker stand is crooked and just, oh my God. So let's rotate this. She's a heavy girl, by the way. So we have got a lot of stuff happening back here. Power is just a figure eight cable. Uh, my source coming from the Matrix Audio Expedif 3 is a fiber optic. Uh, you'll note that this whole thing is on the right hand side, because again, there's no switch that says, well, make this one the left speaker. You could, if you're using the line in, you could just reverse RCAs and then have it be the left speaker. But if you use a digital input, the arc input, the line in, uh, there's network port, uh, you get this speaker plug, which is weird as hell and small, and it says out to left speaker. It's, it's, it's out to left speaker. By the way, there's just blinking and beeping lights. It's blinking and beeping and blinking. Bluetooth setup, I might have accidentally hit that. And there's Wi-Fi setup to do Wi-Fi control. So it is a full fledged smart speaker. It will appear in your home, on your Spotify, on your Amazon Music as a device that exists on your network. Now, I haven't gotten the app and set it all up yet. I'll probably end up doing that. But in the interim, you you know how it goes. I don't have to, you know, hey, look at the app. It's kind of okay. Um, 
here's your line in, here's your line in. They share one, so I don't think you could use both. Here is your sub out, which does do the switching. I made sure of it. I put on a bassy track, you plug in an RCA cable, and the bass vanishes from the units, giving a little more headroom, a little more volume potential without distortion, and it gets pushed off to, in this case, a Klipsch 1400, which is a rather large subwoofer. And I could tell you, it does a fantastic job of feeding that. However, I did have that subwoofer on the LFE mode, which means basically no cutoff from the frequencies. And I thought that this sub out was pushing a couple, like I had to bring it down to a hundred Hertz. So this sub out, you want to be careful. You want to, you're still going to have to set the subwoofer to be a hundred Hertz or 70 Hertz somewhere under where it is. I think it's putting out 200 Hertz ish. There's a service USB, which you're not allowed to use. Don't use that. I guess you use the power or something, but it's for service. And then you have a network in and out loop which I'm finding this more and more on modern devices because more and more things are smart devices. Less and less of them are going to try to rely on Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi lags, Wi-Fi is in a bad area. All of a sudden you've paid thousand dollars for a pair of speakers, doesn't work. They let your installer or you plug in a network plug. And then the output is so that you don't have to have a hub in your thing. You could just literally go loop in, loop out, loop in, loop out to all this different equipment. And it'll just, it's just to exist on the network. I haven't seen that in equipment since I was studying fucking networking, like that sonnet ring stuff, but there you go. Um, you got your Wi-Fi set up to press and hold and you use the app and you get the Bluetooth set up, which literally just turns into pairing mode. It's now off and there's your HDMI arc and that's it. And you got one port and a smudgy fingerprint because I didn't clean the back of it. Port doesn't chuff and it certainly doesn't hurt that I put all this stuff there. Now let's put these back around. It, by the way, says DTS PlayFi, uh, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi certified. So I don't know. I think the app that controls this is the DTS app, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm going to do the thing where I put washers under the front just to make it go up like an eighth of an inch. Or for you people in Europe, three, three millimeters. I need it to be three millimeters higher. So when I'm looking at it, one of the problems with having a really shiny speaker is when you look at it, you see the reflections of everything. And if you're looking at it and you're sitting over there and you see the top and it's not level, it just needs to be a little bit higher because the floor is literally like that. It's okay. I got them covered. Um, I believe these would work fantastically on a desk. Like that's just, it's my, my core belief is, by the way, it says Bluetooth ready to pair. It, it has an entire screen. That's just, it's nuts. Let's set it to optical. I don't know. HDMI is capitalized. And optical is lowercase. Line is lowercase. It's fine, I guess. If you click it, you lower the display from bright to dim to off. You also get the play, pause, and the pushing of this. There's your there's your little mute logo. Isn't that cute? And then you get your volume, which is a really nice... It's so nice with the knob. It's a little bit slow on the remote and it'll lag a little bit. Like I've held it down. In fact, where do I have the remote? The remote in my pocket. Have I got it in my pants? The answer's in my pants. If we hold this down, it goes, but I let go. And it just continues that little bit after I let go. And I did have one instance where I pulled it out, I hit the button, tapped it a bunch of times real fast. And I was hitting down and it was going up. That just comes from the frequencies for this and this being just slightly too close together. And it just sees it wrong. The lights are getting in its eyes. And it's like, did you mean up? And I'm like, oh, no, I didn't mean up. I meant down. Um, hit next track. Oh, we're on line in. I should probably switch back to optical. I see a salty message. I can't play more than that. I don't know who owns this. Vampire Weekend? Oh, God, I'm going to jail. Um, the other issue that I find, and this is just a general thing on most powered speakers, there's a delay. It will go to sleep. Obviously, there's no power button. It's designed to sleep and then wake up when it gets a signal. It's five seconds. Now, that sounds pretty quick. It's like you could put that as a bullet point on the sales pitch. Auto sleeps. Wake up within five seconds. But the problem is, I think it sleeps too soon. I, I actually haven't done the test to see if it's an hour or if it's 10 minutes, if it's an hour, that's fine. But if it's 10 to 15 minutes and it's powering down, 
That's about the time it takes for me to pause something I'm watching, get up, go in the kitchen, pop popcorn, take a leak, come back, unpause the thing, and then there's five seconds of people talking and no sound. And then the speakers wake up and then I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And then I got to back up 10 seconds. because it's, it's, yeah. So it's just like, I wish there was an option for just never auto off or always make the auto off like insanely long, like an hour. Because I've had other speakers that do it within like seven minutes and it's just the most infuriating thing you've ever experienced. Again, if you'd like to hear these speakers actually playing, that will be available in the sound demo. Sound demos are all disappeared from YouTube after the copyright strike from Sony from a 2016 Beats fucking solo sound demo that just existed online because I didn't delete it. Because like, eh, I'll just leave it there. And then fucking Sony comes out of nowhere. How many years is that later? Seven years later? It's like, no, this. Strike him for this. Why? Why? It was the Monogatari soundtrack, so it was worth it. But, you know, if you want to hear me actually play things with good microphones, uh, patrons and uh, subscribe star supporters are now the only people that get access to not only new sound demos with unlimited playlists and naughty wallpapers, but every sound demo from ever in the past. All the audio has been ripped from those and is available for listening to. So if you miss the sound demos, if you like them for just finding new music, they ain't never coming back to YouTube. Ah, that's too much. You like Billy Joel? I hope you're with this song. Wait. Easy Muffin from Amon Tobin. I love this song. They use this song all the time in Top Gear. And I'd love to play a little bit of it for you now. But that's all we can play. Yeah, I'll put some, I'll get some Mark Ribier, or I'll find someone who can like doesn't give a shit and I'll use that for demos. But for now, in this moment of crisis with the NAS broken and strikes, like I'm on the heels of a strike, like you're gonna get like, that's enough Frankie goes to Hollywood. Yeah, these speakers, I don't think they're the highest of high-end speakers. Like I accidentally, I have those Buchart P400s over there, which are Buchart's and they're passives. So they're not really competing with these. And the Bucarts are bigger. They're six and a halves and they're a bigger box. And I think they sound more natural. But what these can just shove out, like this, that's the bass from these right now. Those little five and a quarters through this box, which uh, again, there, there's probably in the app, there's bass and treble tuning. I'm, I'm literally not getting the app. Don't ask me to get the app. I'm, I'm tired of getting apps. As much as I want to get the app, click the link to the thing and then look at the app and it'll tell you everything the app does. Right? Sometimes I just can't, I can't this week. They sound clean and narrow and straightforward. They sound like they're pushing to have as much low end as possible when you're in the, you know, not subbed mode. When I think these speakers actually shine. Here, wait, we're going to put this up. There's a slight delay in it. I'm going to put them to, you know what? We're going to go to maximum. Absolute 100%. Because here's where the limitation of these speakers kind of threw me off, is that at 100%, they're loud, but they're not like killing themselves loud. I feel like this is as loud as anyone would ever need to play these. But if you want to get them, you want to assist them where they're not trying to save themselves from exploding and use their G speed, then you plug the sub in. Here, wait, we'll play. This is Alex Blood Club. I don't know, we, we, it's Halloween. We've got the, the, the creepy wallpapers going on. Let's hit one of these. Sub in. 35 on this, this controls the subwoofers that are all behind the magic curtain. Let's see, let's see what goes down. I think they want you to buy this and a sub. I think this is their goat. They're, they're delivering amazing speakers, at least worth the $900 price tag against all the triangles and the, the triangles, air pulse. I won't count things like Callies because those aren't really like remote control speakers. You have to do other things to them. But they're doing enough good at enough 
They're doing it competently enough that once you add that sub and it sort of unburdens them with low end, they can actually shine. That's Andor, so I don't know, is that Sony? Does Sony own Disney? Does Disney own Sony? Oh my God. Oh. Once you get a sub involved, it completely lets these speakers go. They're just like, here you go. Here's everything. It takes away, that five and a quarter becomes a mid-range. And that's the best part. They compete at least with the ultras. Now in DSP form, they compete with the ultras. Oh yeah. Put the volume up a little bit more. We're at, th we're at what is that, the three quarter mark? It says Red Axes, Camino de de Freifis, Rebelliodo Me Remix from I Love Techno 2013, probably owned by Sony. Yeah. Holy gods. Hey, it's Epic Score. I could play this. Where's the thing to make it not shuffle? There we go. Oh my fuck. All right. That's more of an impression of the goddamn clip subwoofer that's hiding in the corner than these speakers. But the fact that they're blended together in such a way that I'm like, it d doesn't sound like these are lacking compared to that or that is overpowering these. So a big, big applause to SCS or I guess they kind of expect you to get a sub since they're SVS. By the way, that's Flash Gr Gordy. Flash Gordy from Pounding Percussion on the Epic Score Free Loss. This is the only songs I can play. I'd say a medium room, you're good to go. You could buy this and just not get a surround receiver. Just be like, you know what, fucking honey, we don't want this. You can't upgrade that to a surround system. I mean, I guess you could with the RCA ins. But you'd probably be better off just getting past the speakers at that point, and you just go to SVS for that as well. Just, just fucking chill out for the ultras. What is this bass doing? That's another, I guess I'll call it an issue, is your presets, I think in the app you can mess with them. I don't think you could mess with the bass output. Like, I can't make the sub not be on right now or lower the output to the sub just with the remote. It's kind of a limiting factor. What was the last speaker I did that actually had the bass? It had the subwoofer adjustment on here. So you plugged in a sub, and then you were able to like, no, 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 the babies are sleeping. And then reset it and bring it back up. Why can't I remember what speaker that was? That was like a week ago. Holy shit. Floating evidence. All right, we're gonna actually break something. I think this might be up just a, a smidgen. Just, just bring it to like a smid, smidgen, T ten. That's still insane. All right, you know what? We know how insane it is. Let's let it go solo for a second. Hit me again. Do it. Not the same, but you know what? It's fucking trying. I, I can't blame it for trying. I wish I had vo I wish this epic score had vocals. I need free female vocals. Female jazz vocalists, copyright free. Tell me who they are in the in the comments. Wait. That woman's singing. It's not the same. I miss being able to play music here on YouTube. Keep an eye out in case I decide to shift the channel anywhere. I'll give you guys a heads up. But as of right now, if you want to hear me just go fucking nuts with actual music, sound demos are available to patrons and subscribers. So subscribers for $5 a month. All the sound demos ever. Yeah. 
one of the it's it's definitely a tweeter centric speaker like you could tell it's all about that tweeter it's all about the detail it's throwing out it's all about the this width because it's if you notice the tweeter did not really have any sort of uh waveguide uh a waveguide being that tweeter this is just a waveguide all right that tweeter not really having a waveguide fucking waveguide eh, not really having a waveguide which means it's just splashing treble in every direction and in order to do that and then keep it all controlled you got to do a lot of tuning that is the same tweeter they've had on those speakers for six years they know exactly how they're tuning it and setting it up and now with dsp correction it's even better at focusing on imaging so i think i'm going to give the svs uh prime wireless a pretty good score maybe even an epic score see what I did there see what I did there I did that. Ooh, that's without the sub. That is without the sub. I think they might, I I think depending on how well these sell, they might come out with a bigger version without a five and a quarter with a six and a half. I wanna see those. I wanna hear those. I would even accept a five and a quarter tower. Just, just make the box, you know, all the way down to the floor and give them that sort of space to work with and see what they could do. Because SVS has, the fact that this isn't just some generic speaker, like the triangles I reviewed, a lot of them were just generically good triangle speakers with, well, I would say generically, because they're exceptionally good triangle speakers with a generic, you know, power module in the back that's like, ah, eh, fuck it. This is bespoke to SVS. They put money and time into putting a fucking screen. An actual, it's, by the way, it's scrolling optical, by the way. Which, if that gets annoying, you can turn off the screen. I don't know why it isn't just sitting there. It, it's not like optical doesn't fit. Why are you scrolling? Who are you scrolling for? Yeah, no. I'm definitely gonna, gonna just mute that screen. Just just make it mute. But yeah, no, this, uh, these are a speaker. These are a good speaker. These are one of those speakers that SVS, if they come out with another one in three years, I'll be shocked. Because they're done. They've, they've accomplished their goal. Um, I guess I'll leave the covers off for now. Anyway, I'm gonna watch some Eminence and Shadow. You all can just chillax. enjoying these z reviews here still on youtube for the time being and i will i'll catch you next time again five dollars a month let you see these reviews early participate in yard sales i probably hold on these for a while but if svs is like you know what do whatever Maybe they end up in the yard sale. Maybe I use that to promote me and go to like Capital Audio Fest or I know Canjib New York's coming up. So we'll see. I'll talk to SVS. Although they really don't have a, a, a hat in Canjib. They definitely have a hat in Capital Audio Fest, which this is probably being seen by you after that show's over, depending on the date. Because, oh, five dollars a month. See reviews early, way early. Like this video might be on Patreon for a month before it goes live. If you're seeing it live on YouTube, Look at the oldest comments. Usually patrons will see the review, post a comment. It's down there for like three weeks, four weeks, because they're getting priority releases that don't wait for the three-day rule for YouTube. So you get to see all the reviews way earlier. Um, sound demos, I told you about those. You understand how those work. I just play whatever, we use wallpapers, whatever. Um, and then yard sales. First to the 10th of every month, I ship internationally for half shipping and content to the United States and Canada for free. So if I were to put these in a yard sale and you were living in Canada, I would absorb the cost of $60 to ship these up to you and whatever you bid is the number you pay. If it's Hungary, you would bid, you know, 15,000 kronos. You'd pay 15,000 kronos plus half of shipping. I don't have no idea how Hungarian weird accents would be, but that's my best. I do. And then $10 a month. $10 a month. I still have a soul. Private behind the scenes telegram chat where you could ask me questions directly. You could ask anyone's questions directly. And 
Once you're there, you get into a lifetime swap me channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear forever amongst other patrons. Forever. Forever. Actually, this is a good song. This might go on the Sound Demo track list. It's just, it's orchestral and big and soft. It's like, like these speakers. They're, they don't do anything like weird. They're just fucking good speakers. And I gotta respect that. No. All right, I'm Zeos. This review is over. Peace out.